الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بعد يقول الله عز وجل ومن يتوكل على الله فهو رسول إن الله بالغ أمره قد جعل الله لكل شيء قدرا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse, Allah will be enough for those who put their trust in Him. Allah achieves His purpose. Allah has set a due measure for everything. And in this verse, there's a powerful reminder for us on what tawakkul actually looks like. On what it means to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to put our trust in Him, Azza wa Jalla. And if we understand a few points just in this short verse, on what it means to rely on Him, it will allow us to truly rely on Him Azza wa Jalla. The first of them that He Azza wa Jalla talks about is to make sure and for me to actually trust Allah. And for me to have a relationship with my Lord. And for me to understand who He Subhanahu wa Ta'ala actually is. And how do I know Allah? How do I learn about Allah? How do I draw near to Him? How do I love Him Azza wa Jalla? And he's given us the solution for that too. By reading his book. By spending time with it. By pondering over its verses. And what verses should we ponder over and spend time with? It's, it's actually very interesting. If you look at the way that many of us read the Quran and engage with it, we'll read the translation and then we'll get to the end. What was Samir Ali? And we'll kind of skip over that part. And we'll just continue reading. When these should actually be the focal points of when we are reading and when we're looking at the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it is in those names, it is in those characteristics that we will find an explanation of all of the, what preceded it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He chose those names specifically in those specific places for us to ponder over, for us to engage with. When He as the talks about Himself, that's when we should pay the most attention. When He as the discusses Himself, that's when we should stop and that's when we should focus. Out of all of his names, why did he choose these two? Or out of all of his names, why did he choose these seven? Or out of all of his names, in this place, in this place, why did he call himself Rabb and why did he not say Allah? Over here he used Rahman, why didn't he use Malik? Over here he used Tawab, why didn't he use Rahim? And if we engage in this way, it will help us understand truly who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Because if I want to love Allah, if I want to rely on Allah, if I want to engage with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what do I need to do? I need to engage with Him. I need to know who He is. And I believe, I truly do, that there is a shortcoming in how we view our Lord. I believe that. And the reason I feel that is because of how we're dealing with one another. And how we interact with one another. And how we put our personal needs over the needs of others. There's nothing wrong with me wanting and seeking that which will better me. There's nothing wrong with that. If I want to get more money, love us. There's no problem with that. If I want to grow a family, if I want to get married, right? All of these things are for me. If I want a nicer car, if I want nicer clothing, if I want nicer perfumes, all of these things are for me and for my life. And all of these things are for what? They're, they're, they're permissible. And I'm encouraged to seek them. The only condition that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts when seeking these things, He says, do not do it at the expense of others. Seek wealth, but don't hurt anyone seeking your wealth. Get a nicer car, but don't harm anyone while you're doing that. Don't oppress others. Don't lie. Don't take advantage. Don't hurt anyone else. I have made all of these things permissible, so seek them in a permissible way. And if I truly relied on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I wouldn't need to lie to purchase that car. If I truly relied on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I would make sure that I'm trustworthy when I'm at work. 
And if I truly relied on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I would make sure that I'm dealing with people in the best possible way. And are there people who will make me angry? Are there individuals who will make me upset? Are there individuals who might even try to take advantage of me? Yes, absolutely. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to ask me about that. He's going to ask me about me. And He might ask us, why did you not learn about me? Why did you not learn about my characteristics? I sent my book to you. I sent the guidance to you. I sent the best example to you, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What excuse do you have to not follow? Why did you overlook? I gave you time. I gave you wealth. I gave you health. What did we do in exchange for those gifts? What did we do in exchange for those blessings? Did we spend our time to learn about Him, Azza Did we spend our time to make sure that we are honest and that we're upright and that we're upstanding? And that we would spend time with Him, Azza through His book and spend time with His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, through His seal? Did we spend time learning about the one that we worship? Did we spend time learning about the one which we learned through that worship? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah has made a very clear, easy path. And He wants us to rely on Him. And if I need to rely on Him, and if I must learn to rely on Him, I need to know who He is, Azza and he subhanahu wa ta'ala, he goes on to say that Allah achieves his purpose, subhanahu That Allah, he will do what he wills. He, whatever he wills to happen, it will happen. The only thing he wants me to do is to have to look upon him and to rely on him. This is the second part of the That knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the second part of it, is that the end result, and the end goal, and the end success, is not in my hands. It is He Azza wa who will decide what is to happen. My job is to rely on Him. My job is to take whatever means I can, have to walk on Him and go forward. I get in my car, I make sure that there's gas, I put on my seatbelt, and I drive toward my destination. This is what is required. Whether I reach that destination or not, whether I'm healthy by the time I get there. Whether I'm safe by the time I reach. That is in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hands. And what does this also help control? This idea of anxiety that exists in our culture and our society. How many of us are anxious and worried constantly? And having anxiousness and being worried, these are natural feelings that we have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a spiritual means to help deal with much of that. If I want to help quell my anxiety, if I want to lessen my worries, then I really need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I need to understand that all of this is not in my control. He Azza wa Jal is the one that He controls all affairs. My only job is that I need to rely on Him. And is it possible I'll get hurt? Yes. Is it possible I'll lose money? Absolutely. Is it possible that someone else I love might get hurt? Yes. And just because we rely on Allah, it doesn't mean that the outcome is going to be good. Just because I trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it doesn't mean things are going to happen the way I want them. I can get my money ready. I can go and I can try to purchase a house or a car or a product. These are things that I wanted, and I prepared myself, and I trusted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow me to reach. And I trusted Him, Azza wa Jal, to allow me to succeed. And when I get to the store, or I go to purchase the home, the house has already been sold. The car is already gone. The product that I wanted is not there. And in this life, we will see it, and we have seen it. That good things happen to bad people. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was abused. He was made fun of. He was thrown rocks at. Gone to war with. His family ostracized. 
And that was him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the most mutawakkil person that ever existed. Salawatullahi wa sallam Reliance doesn't mean success. But reliance does bring something that there is no replacement for, and that is ana, and that is contentment. Knowing that I had no say in the outcome anyway. And knowing that whatever happened, this was actually the best for me. And sometimes that's difficult. And sometimes that's hard. Making all my efforts, putting my seatbelt on, getting my insurance, doing all these things. And along with that, I, I get into an accident. And some of us might say, Ya Allah, I did everything I was supposed to do. Why did I get into this accident? And that's how the method of the shaitan. But this is where the shaitan enters. Because I'm telling myself, Ya Allah, I did everything I was supposed to do. Well, guess what? Allah is doing everything that He's supposed to do. And the things that He wants, and the things that I want, sometimes they're different. But maybe through that accident, He delayed me from getting into a place that would have caused a bigger problem. Maybe through that accident, He wanted to give me and send me a reminder that you don't have control over everything. Maybe through that accident, someone else will save. But having that perspective is difficult. But nobody said to walk was easy. And that is something that we all have to learn. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all from the Lord. That's it. That's all he needs. That's all he needs is the shahada 
and he will be complete. And for that person, we love Islam for them, and we hope Islam for them. So just imagine how our beloved Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was. If we can understand that, and if we can feel that, and we can empathize with that, just imagine that how he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was. But this is part of the world. This is part of our lives. That sometimes bad things will happen, for sure. But this should not stop me from continuously relying on Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and I should continue relying on Him, because, like I said, that will bring me peace of mind, it will bring me contentment, and that is something that is irreplaceable. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala make us from the Mutawakkilin. May He Azza give us all Qanaa, give us all contentment. May He Azza have mercy on all of those who have passed. May He Azza help those who are in any type of financial distress out of that distress. May he also give shifa, give healing to all of those who are ill, and may he also help all of those who are in debt out of that debt, and may he also gather us in his paradise. <laughs>